There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with a beautiful young woman by the name of Alyssa Rushton. Not Alyssa, Alyssa Rushton. Alyssa, what's going on? How are you? Hey, Jay. Wow. Thank you so much for having me. I love that you called me a young woman because I'm almost 50. That's awesome. You definitely don't look 50. But remember, you're only as old as you feel. Absolutely. Okay, That's literally the truth. And uh, as a person of 52, I consider myself 18 every day. You know, just getting one year older closer. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. So for you guys that don't know Alyssa, she is a globally acclaimed energy intuitive, a near death survivor and a transformational teacher. And she's going to be telling us her story along with a bunch of other amazing things today. And uh, Alyssa, cause you, I know you watch the Jay Campbell podcast, which is awesome. And I'm honored, humbled and privileged for that. Um, you know, I've been asking a lot of my guests recently, probably since, mid 2021, um, you know, they're kind of their thoughts on where humanity is going. Right. And, you know, I kind of like to kind of introduce it. Are you a buyer of humanity or a seller of humanity? But, you know, obviously combined with your experience and stuff like that, like, where do you see us as a species going? Oh, I love this question so much. You know, what happened to me in my near-death experience is what I believe is happening to the globe all at once. I believe that we wake up spiritually to that next level by having absolutely catastrophic, you know, bottom of the barrel, dark, deep, dark night of the soul moments. And what is happening on planet Earth, by the way, I predicted this in my 2023 global energy update, is about a billion people waking up. And the wake up process of the soul is a really tough one. It is filled with awful things happening to you so that you can jar out enough of the programming and false beliefs that we all got taught here. And once you get jarred enough out of your identity and enough trauma, like something traumatic happens to you so that you have this total like jarring moment where you break from everything you've ever been taught, then the wake up process starts to happen and you can start to peel away those false beliefs one by one by one, those beliefs of I'm separate from divine source energy, those beliefs of we're here alone on the planet, we're human beings uh, and that's all that's here. We're the smartest species, right? You can can, you can start to unpack some of these false notions and false beliefs and, and that you are just two strands of DNA. You, you know, we're, right. we're so much more than what we've been told. And finally, modern science is proving that out. But that, I believe, is what's happening is that we are waking up over a billion people over the course of the next year or so. What I was shown is between 2023 and 2025, is our massive global wake up years where we will have those shakedowns and quake downs to the point to where people wake up and start to be able to live a little bit differently. So, so uh, interesting. So I, I kind of agree with you in that we're, we're in, we're in the, what they would call the mass convergence right now. And that you're either waking up or you're not waking up. So a couple of questions related to that is like, the ancients talked about the shift of the ages, you know, the new age people talk about the shift or ascension, you know, all of these different things. I mean, obviously ascension could basically be you becoming aware that you are a multidimensional being, right? And you're not just this material body. I mean, let's face it, like, you know, if we're looking at the consciousness scale right now on planet earth estimated, it's probably still 
80% of human beings are vibrating in fear, right? Mm -hmm. Along the line of integrity, you know, full of anxiety, as we were talking off air, uh, you know, despair, guilt, shame, apathy, whatever, all those different adjectives. Um, but could ascension be that percentage of people or, you know, half of that percentage of people. And I don't know what it is. You know, maybe you have speculation or whatever, but, you know, getting to a line of 200 on the vibrational or lo level of conscious scale, which is courage, which is out of fear, right? Like we've risen out of fear. We're now courageous enough to realize that we are accountable and we can overcome our victimhood and stuff like that. But, um, that's my first question. My second question is like, do you define awake? What, how do you define awakened? Mm, that's great. Well, well, first let me address the first question first, yeah. you know, to your point, there's a lot of people that are still asleep and, and a lot, a massive amount of people. One thing I think is really important to remember at this time, when we see somebody who's asleep mm -hmm. and we're kind of judging them as like, Oh, you're asleep. You're never going to wake up. If you had seen me back in 2005, you would have looked at me 240 pounds me too. in diapers, in a walker, with a pick line, on 28 different medications, and you would have said, this woman will never wake up. She will die like this. Yeah. And so what I feel is it's really important not to count our fellow humans out. Not judge them. Yeah. No one's beyond redemption right now. And by the way, when you have a catastrophic uh, situation. Uh, look what's happening in the Middle East. Look what's happening. It's happening on an individuated level, but it's happening at a global level too. Mm. So we can't count our fellow humans out. And once that wake up happens and you get shaken to your core, yeah. then you can quickly start to pop above the layers and you'll go through all of the layers. You know, it took me about five years to process my near death experience mm -hmm. and go through the layers and pop out into the frequency of love and above. And, you know, but it can be done and people given the proper tools can even do it faster now because there's more people holding the resonance frequency. I'm from the cell phone industry. And what I really believe that people like you are here to do and myself is to be those cell phone towers holding that frequency. Remember when we first got cell phones and you couldn't carry a call from the north end of the town to the south end of your town? You just were dropping it every five minutes. Of course. We're now creating this network of love and above towers of frequency through in and through our physical body. And so the more people that are holding that frequency and understanding that, yes, people look very much asleep at the wheel right now. There's, you know, some people I've heard the term walking zombies, uh, you know, all of that stuff. The mm -hmm. more we look at them and see their potential of, I actually see you as divine light in physical form, even though you're not being that. Yeah. That's yeah. a huge secret to this whole ascension process. So do you, so, so you use the ascension process. So do you see, I mean, again, I know we're veering off the topic of the shows, but you're on the Jay Campbell podcast and this is fascinating stuff. Uh, do you see, so how do you define ascension? I mean, and, and before you answer, ascension is a lot of different things to a lot of different people as a student of the esoteric work, which I definitely am. And I'm constantly reading stuff around that all the time. Um, I think there's so many ways to define what Ascension is, but I think ultimately, as you and I were talking before the show started, if we come to the realization through our awareness and through our study and our inner work and our contemplative practice, and obviously our dark nights of the soul, which I've had two, you've had, obviously, I know for sure one that you're going to talk about in Western medicine and then through your dark, your near death experience. But if we define Ascension or I'm sorry, if we define our purpose as souls on this planet as, um, to evolve and grow, but you know, to, in my opinion, and obviously through the stuff I've read and through the stuff I've intuited through my meditations is first thing is to overcome victimhood, right? That's why we can't judge those that haven't. So once we can overcome victimhood, we become personally counter personally accountable, sovereign and empowered. Right. And then the second thing is, is once we've gotten that, and that's obviously the most important and biggest step, but the second thing is then is then managing our energy field mm -hmm. and, the energy field of us is obviously always under threat slash attack because it's a choice whether or not we react out of fear, which is again, 80% of people most of the time, or 
respond out of love. And responding out of love, as you know, takes great focus, diligence, effort, action. You have to think. You can't default survival program react, right? So to respond out of love to someone takes courage. It takes compassion. It takes kindness. It even takes curiosity because you got to be like, whoa, like, how am I going to respond to this? You know, I always use the story and I'll do it right now because it's perfect of you have this amazing meditation in the morning and you're now in your place of your work, you're, you're getting in your vehicle to go to your place of work or to your business or whatever. And some crazy person cuts you off in traffic on your way, right? Like driving like a maniac, cut you off, literally almost kill you. You still have a choice, Alyssa, to respond out of love or do what most people do and react out of fear. And obviously we've both been there. I mean, God knows how many times I've been in, uh, road rage situations where it's like, I grab my steering wheel and speed up and like look over at him. And you know, I'm a big guy. So I like point at him, like pull over and we'll, we'll settle this. You know what I mean? Or you can always, you know, do the resonant vibrational thing of like pulling back. And again, this is so few of people that can do this, but you can choose this. And we like, wow, that person must be having a really bad day. I mm -hmm. said, I send you love and light, right? I send you a resonant frequency. And if you understand the laws of energy and you get into, you know, quantum entanglement and physics and all these things, we understand that love transmutes fear. The energy wave of love will overcome and transmute fear. So it's like, if you see that person who's having the bad day in that other car, uh, look at you when you send them that love frequency, their face will be like, like, because they're feeling like the transmutation of the anger and rage and, you know, road rage that they're probably experiencing and you're not giving it back to them, which would obviously amplify their frequency of anger and fear. Um, and you're giving them this love frequency. That's what's so amazing. Right. And so as a human being, you know, it's kind of gets back to what you were saying. If we can all get to that place where we can choose to respond out of love and not react out of fear, the matrix can end overnight. And that, you know, kind of goes back to the other question is like, is Ascension just ending the matrix? I love the question. Well, you know, to your story and to your point, I'd also add that when you are vibrating in a true frequency of love, you don't encounter that situation. That's a great point. That's a great point. Your reality actually shifts and changes. When you are in a particular frequency, you're actually bending reality as you go. There's near misses. There's near things that never can come into your field because you're totally holding true strong field of energy. And that's what, when you ask about ascension and there's so many different versions of what the new earth is and the splitting off of the energy and the, and the planets, here's how I see the splitting off of the energy. Okay. You're a person who's committed to radiating at the frequency of love and you're vibrating in your life while you will still live here on planet earth and you're ascending your consciousness right? Because that's really what we're doing. We're ascending our consciousness um, and also the physical body as well. You're going to feel like you live in a drastically different world than what the vast majority of people live in, you know, and it's going to feel very different. Experiences are going to happen differently for you. You will live in what I call the magic and miracle zone, you know, like where your whole life is like, wow, 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 wow. And it's not to say that things won't happen and you won't have to deal with stuff and emotions. However, it'll occur to you as so much differently than it would have when you were in disempowerment mode or victim land, um, one of those places, right? When we're disempowered, you're just going to feel it differently. So I personally think to answer your question, ascension is ultimately about expanding your consciousness. Look, you don't get to take your physical body with you on the other side. You don't, right. you don't even get to take your J-ness. Your J right. identity does not go to the long haul with you. Totally. You get to take these experiences and feed it up into the consciousness that is expanding. And here's the thing about planet earth that we have yet to understand is the experiences that we view as horrific and bad on the other side, it is simply an expansion consciousness 100 and it's the hardest thing for the human brain to get yeah i mean well i mean i i totally understand that i'm always telling people 
we ha- the problem it goes back to judgment the problem is that we label our experiences as negative or positive and outside of the third dimension where there is no linear duality there is no reverse polarity everything just is yes so if you just observe from a place of neutral observation and not label every experience that happens to you you won't create or and even really personify negative or positive right it just is and so it's like you know you think about everything that happens to us and how you know in our life before we really truly raise our consciousness and we label bad experiences and you see so many people in your life and our life and our loved ones and our friends who can never overcome or go beyond that label that they gave that one thing in their life. Like, I think I see it like a lot of times with women, like where a relationship breaks down or they get a horrible divorce or something like that. And and then then they're stuck because that divorce, you know, there's blame, there's victimhood around it. There's, you know, whatever, but there's like a leveling in the sand of like, I can't overcome this because I can't look at this as an opportunity for evolution and growth. And as you know, where you are now consciously, and of course where I am and a lot, and of course, thankfully, a lot of the people that watch this show, you can look at every single thing that ever happened to you in your life, Alyssa, and realize that that was, there was great benefit from it. And, and, and the things that we first, you know, usually, especially when we're not vibrating or we're vibrating now, like when we're earlier times in our lives, the, the things that we like to label as negative are really the greatest obstacles for growth and evolution. Exactly. They are there for us. And when you are in fear and victimhood and disempowerment, you can't get there from there. It's it's one of the hardest things to do. And to point that out to somebody who's in disempowerment mode or victim mode, they will absolutely tell you why that's not true. They will get defensive, angry. And if you can get past that, and that that's the biggest thing. I had someone once ask me, how do you get somebody out of victim mode and being disempowered? And the first thing is, if you feel in yourself like, oh, that's not me. I know. I'm, no, I'm not in victim mode. That's how you know that you are. Exactly. Right? Because I can say to myself, oh, girl, you are in victim mode right now. Like, oh, you're being very disempowered. Because when you're conscious, it's okay. Your ego, right? We're breaking down the false ego. And the the ego wants to be like, I'm, no, no, I would never be in victim mode. Mm-mm, that, that person did that to me. And so, yeah, the and this is such a huge thing that's happening on the planet because we have been programmed in the, the yeah. false ego to have the false ego driving versus being soul led, living a soul led life, educate, by the way, educating for the soul, you know, in Lumerian times, which is right. alternate history, which we don't teach about, but you know, that when we would birth kids, first of all, very consciously, we would bring them consciously in. I live on the, the land of Mu. Um, and so I've, you know, I've really gotten the full downloads here about that, but we would then once the child was born, we would look at their astrology and their numerology and educate their selves based on right. what their soul was here to do. And we don't do that. We're so far away from I'm that. Gonna, I, so I knew this was going to happen. We're not even going to talk about your story. We're, I'm going to bring you back on because this is deeper and more important. Maybe we'll wind it in. But in fact, so we're getting into the reptilian. I knew we were going to get into this somehow. But uh, so the reptilian consciousness is the ego and the ego is very necessary in a physical body in a physical matter realm materialist materialistic manifestation of humanity right because we are energy and frequency at base essence right we're just spiritual energy eternal spiritual energy inhabiting a physical avatar body but you know through genetic um you call it um manipulation you know, hybridization by these various groups. There's many of them. It's not just the reptilians. There's all sorts of beings. Many of them have hybridized us for um, beneficial, you know, benevolent uh, purposes and stuff like that too. They gave us our consciousness. They gave us our soul or the ability to have a soul or whatever. But the reality is, is going back to what you were saying, women weren't even fertile, but once a year, right? You're getting into astrology and you're getting into like really deep dive of understanding this, like, the, the 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 manipulation was like tying fertility to the moon cycle and the moon cycle made people fertile women and men really both of us because we we're both playing a role um you know every 30 days versus like once a year and and the astrolo- the astrological balance once a year was 
how we were able to line up both males and females in the right union, right? Because as you know, there are astrological unions that are not correct. Right. And when you, when you put those two people together, they mm -hmm. just cause a distortion in the cosmos. Totally. And so this is where we're at right now. And look, to, to go even deeper, the, the bloodlines of humanity are extremely polluted. And it's not, I, I don't want to sit here and come from a vi place of victimhood and say it's not our fault, right? But there, there are ex exigent circumstances to like what has happened here with like the genetic engineering and all of these different, you know, globe, what's we'll called cosmic species coming here and getting involved in the play, right? Yeah. The, the earth is a play, as Shakespeare, Shakespeare said. Um, but but the reality is is like this is so we're talking about things that very few people understand. And I'm so awesome. I, I'm so grateful. And again, I knew that this conversation was going to happen when I really didn't know you from Adam. But I looked at your face and I looked you up online and I was like, oh yeah, I'm having a conversation with Melissa. But like, I mean, dude, it's so cool. You're talking about Lemuria, and and, well, and where you live in the Big Island and and just the whole moo. Uh, ethos and 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 like this is information that we need to bring out into the mainstream yeah. people aren't talking about this kind of stuff well and i'd love to bring forward a concept do you mind if i talk about lumeria and atlantis because at the top of the show you before we started recording we were talking about this split and people that were in the metaverse right and the technology and kind of shutting down their consciousness and then people that are opening their consciousness so one of the the beliefs that i actually have based on my experience on the other side. It's not a belief, it's a knowing. There you go. Um, is that we had these alternative um, histories that in you know Western society, we've, we've not been told. Atlantis timeline, Lumerian timelines. And both of those civilizations melted down for a variety of reasons. The Atlantean timeline, uh, they imploded because they misused technology. Yeah. And the Lumerian timeline folks imploded because their um, literally their world sunk um, for a variety of reasons, and there was a lot of trauma and separation. And so you could look at these two civilizations as a mirror to what's happening now. Yeah. Lumerians love nature and being in harmony with the soul, and Atlanteans love technology and manipulating. DNA and all of that stuff. And you could equate that to some of the, um, like the appeal product that they're putting on our vegetables now and some of the injectable stuffs, right? Right. So here's a way to think about it though. And what if, okay, what if right now this timeline that we are on is the timeline where we actually get to heal all that, where the catastrophic stuff on both sides doesn't actually have to happen because we've got enough conscious people sort of bridging the gaps of both sides. And we say, not on our watch, we're going to actually choose to do this differently. We're going to raise our consciousness. We're going to raise our vibration. And we are going to help to heal this rift in the timelines. It's very possible. I told you I wasn't going to say no. I mean, I, I mean, I think that that is what's happening. I mean, so my my understanding and awareness of both Atlantis and Lemuria is that they both coexisted. Lemuria yeah. was Lemuria right. was where it was, and it was beings of both physical and etheric. So, right? mm -hmm. so they actually knew how to manifest as energy and also to take physical form, and that's how there was procreation. Whereas the Atlanteans, as you say, were completely technological based, but they also had connections to fourth density. Mm. Uh, so they also had the ability to like travel through wormholes, travel through, um, just, just put it this way. They, they had technology where they could travel interstellarly and through time. Totally. Technology and, beyond what we can understand. Well, so the thing is, right? Like it, it, you just kind of alluded to it, but what's happening is Lemuria is coming back. Yes. And Atlantis isn't coming back because the U S is Atlantis. I mean, and so is, you know, all the other like first world westernized mechanized technologicalized technocratic societies. It's like a rebirth yeah. of Atlantis, but mm -hmm. we don't want in, in a way it's almost like a competition. Like the breaking off is what you said, like the, 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 the pro human organic type of uh, sovereign people like us will be Lemuria. <laughs> and, 
the Atlantean will be the metaverse slash transhumanist slash whatever you want to call them, the bionic robots. And it's like, can both species slash societies coexist? I mean, that, that I think is the question that will. Well, all- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Unlike last time where it was totally separated. Right. What so I see, alive. I see it as being a healing so, so big that we heal cataclysmic events, so big that we actually avoid those cataclysms that happen because both of those civilizations were out of balance. Why do cataclysms yeah. happen? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's out of balance, right? And so I personally think that this lifetime is our healing lifetime. But so you think that the, the two civilizations can peacefully coexist? What I feel is that it will shift into something that is beyond what we can understand at this time. So, so, so I'm not, not disagreeing. Mm -hmm. So in that idea, you could have two earths. You could have a, you know, again, the, I don't want to get into like the, the new age nonsense, but like they talk about the two earth split, you know, Dolores Cannon and a lot of the books talked about the two earth split. Could the two are split be the Lemurian version of Earth, which is the rebirth of Gaia, where we all become har- har- in harmony with nature? Because look, and I've said this before many times, nature is God. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is go out into a field without technology or people and lay down into, you know, again, you got to have some space and just listening to the insects and to wind and the trees and just every, all the ambient sounds and noise that you hear in nature. And that's literally listening to the frequency of source. Totally. That's what that is. If you've ever done, and you know, anybody who's ever done five MEO, whether it's synthetic or you did, you know, the desert, the actual organic version of the toad that literally blasts you into the source frequency. I mean, I've done this four times in my life and, you know, every single time has been so profound and so cathartic and so purely unconditional love filled. But like, and I always tell people this too, like once you do that, you know what God is, you, you know what the source of all things is that, you know, the creation force, again, the energy and frequency of everything and nothing. But the, but the reality is it's like, until you've, been able to experience that. And again, there's other ways, right? Meditation, breath work. There's so many other ways. I don't want to get into it, but until you know that you are a little bit, and again, not in a judgment, judgmental way, but you are a little bit behind the eight ball because you have been brainwashed and conditioned and engineered and entrained to think that God is sitting on a golden chalice with a trident and a long robe, usually a white guy with a beard. Mm-hmm. Judge- you know, for all of your quote unquote misdeeds or sins, I hate using that word. If you, if people actually understood the etymological root word origin of the word sin, they wouldn't use it, but I won't go any deeper than that. But like the, the reality is, is that we really are manifesting a higher timeline now. Yes. And the higher there's not just a one in play. It used to be the one main timeline in play. That is right. not the case anymore. And, 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 and that's hundred percent accurate. And I, you, you hijacked me perfectly. Cause what I was going to say is that we're manifesting a higher timeline, higher reality, but it's multiple permutations. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a fact now I've meditated deeply on this. The, what is happening, Alyssa, is that the good guys and the bad guys are going back and forward in time to attempt to manipulate the quote unquote timeline or outcome that they ultimately desire. And so it's like this, it's been a giant hyper-dimensional timeline battle. And I would assume that because, you know, we hear this from the ancients, you know, the Mayans told us this, the Aztecs told us this, the good guys always win. It's just kind of the way of the universe, right? And so the bad guys can forestall and delay and change things because of what they're doing, you know, in the timeline. But at the end of the day, ultimately benevolence trumps, you know, I don't even like to call evil because that's kind of a duality standpoint, but good, good will, will overcome bad. The dark, it's the best way to say is the light overcomes the dark. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't think there's anything that the bad guys can ultimately really do in the long run 
I would even argue that right now we're in the overtime session from 2012. The Mayans were the keepers and guardians of time, and they had everything predicted, but they didn't realize that all of these different groups in the cosmos would be, you know, again, in this hyperdimensional backwards and forwards, hijacking the timelines. And so now we're in this time where it's not time, right? Because outside of third dimension, there is no time. But we're in this space, just call it that, this hyperdimensional space where we're literally in overtime waiting for enough people to awaken so that we can have a quote unquote, a positive, you know, call it ascensional awareness moment. I mean, it's so hard to define it. You know, I hate to define it. I don't want to say it's like the new age. They're waiting in ships to take us into 5d. But right. It's, but it's a different it's, experience. We'll have a different experience as a human being and being able to create differently. Right, right. And I will also say that we've been in third grade. Yeah. Earth is third grade and sometimes you know when you're in third grade we want to change the curriculum to be something different but this is third grade curriculum that we're in we're in the as you say the good the bad the polarity of it yeah, yeah. on the other side there's actually no good in that you're ex everything here is god even yes. if it seems not of god oh. it is of god yeah and totally. So that's the hardest thing for the human brain to get. So it's like having a multi-dimensional conversation, but also like really being in the third dimension of the conversation. You know, it's just one of the things that we have to remember why we're here. We're here in third grade. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. I mean, it's, and I always, I want you, I, well, I kind of want you to explain like what you experienced you know, in your near death experience to, 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 to interrelate this, to make a, a, a good clear, a, a, to clear up the story. But I, I like to say that like in the third grade at this very low vibrational state of existence, which as you know, we consented to again mm -hmm. for the evolution and growth of our soul, because obviously source creation force also evolves through our awareness, through our experience, right? Like huge feedback loop. It's a yes. gigantic you got it graphic fractals of the source. And so everything we experience, it experiences. But but the truth is, um, how I want to say this is like in the third dimension, the pursuit of, 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 of thinking, of learning is really reptilian left brain, you know, cultivation. And, and in the third grade, we're not designed to know everything. That's right. and, and to keep thinking that we are is yeah. really taking us off the path of just experiencing everything without judgment, without labels, yeah. so that we can truly, as souls, evolve through it. And then again, it just takes time. But the faster you can experience without labels, without judging, the yeah. faster you also graduate out of third grade. That's the truth. And, you know, when you graduate out of third grade, you get a different, you get to choose a different vehicle body. So if you think about what is, what's the purpose of being human? Well, you said it, I put it differently. It's to master the physical body, the mental body, and the emotional body. Yeah, if exactly. you can't master the physical body, the mental body, and the emotional body, you don't get to graduate third grade. Yeah. Because it's like when you, when you come out of the body, it's like having all of a sudden this rocket ship that goes at light speed, totally. you've got to know how to manage yourself. You've got to know how to manage yourself with energies that are a lot stronger than what we feel here. And you know, yeah. you're going to instantly create on the other side, the minute you think a thought. Yep. So we have to learn these very base level lessons here so that we don't then become mis- creators. And I see miscreators because what has happened with the vast majority of people on this planet is that they were fed a story and they've been unconsciously creating their life yes, yes. and they're spit into the circumstances that they can never get out of. Yeah. And they don't know how to become a conscious creator, a divine creator. And oh my gosh, your whole life can change. So on the other side, Jay, what I realized when I got sucked up into God's source energy, divine source energy, 
It was everything all at once, all the galaxies, all the planets, all the beings, everything all at once. I understood sacred geometry. I understood light. I understood sound. I understood how it all formed together to create our experience. I understood how many different timeline versions there are of earth. I could see all different potentials, all the different fractals. I could put my consciousness into billions of pinpoints of light at once, and they were all emanating from one source. And so it's very hard for the human mind to understand that. It's very hard for the human mind to understand that. I wish I had a book that life is our lives. Um, and the timelines are literally mostly mapped out. We're running, we're running. Um, it's like a book. If you turned the book to page three, you don't have to wait for a page 153 to be written. It's already there. Mm -hmm. And if you're reading the book, you can make a choice to skip to page 22. You can make a choice to skip to page 300. And that's our lives. We don't have to slog through linear space and time. If we don't like something, we can change our frequency. We can change our vibration. We can learn to manage our physical, mental, and emotional bodies. And we can literally pop into a whole nother timeline where a whole new sphere of possibilities are available and yeah. we're coming here to learn basic soul lessons, but you can learn a soul lesson on the very bottom of your vibrational scale. Yeah. Or you can learn it with joy and love and blessings and like just a lit up life. And ultimately you're the only one who can decide how you choose to learn those lessons by your frequency. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I like how you say that. I mean, because like overcoming victimhood, I think is still the first step, but then managing your energy is the physical, mental, and emotional bodies, right? Because you're right. I mean, like, but you know, if I really want to unpack that, you know, I can offend people, but Hey man, it's the Jay Campbell podcast. I get a chance to do whatever I want, Yes, but like, it's true. And, 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 and the way you phrase it is so poignant and so beautiful. I mean, it really like, it rattles me to think about it, but like, if you can't master the physical, mm -hmm. you're not graduating. No, if you can't I mean, master what you're eating and putting in your mouth, right? If you see, can't look, master that piece. Realize we're saying things right now that even though they're pure divine truth, most people don't want to hear. Think of all the people that are quote unquote spiritual who are dumpster fires as physical vessels who don't take care of their health. And it's like, you know, I've gotten into these disagreements and debates and arguments about this and saying like, look, if you can't, physically maintain health because let's, you know, okay, let's be biohackers for a second real quick, Alyssa. When you're a obese inflamed human, you are suffering 24 seven. Yeah. You have cytokine storms, all these terrible, you know, biochemical cascades due to inflammation of your biological system functioning. Yeah. You can't be healthy. You can't receive downloads from source. You can't be connected spiritually, emotionally, uh, biologically. You are in pain and suffering at all times, but nobody wants to talk about this. Well, and the truth is, you know, I'm from technology background, so I would say it differently. I would say you can be connected to source. You can get downloads, but how clear is it going to be? <laughs> it's corrupted, right? You know what I'm saying? Like if I have static on the line, remember in the cell totally phones, true. you can that totally cross true. Talk? And the so frequency you can, is distorted. Yes. And so the, the thing of it is I want people to hear like, yeah, you might feel really connected, but if your body's a mess and you're eating all this stuff that doesn't serve the clearest, purest channel that is you, you're going to not be able to get the clear yeah. connections, the clear yeah. vision. And for me, that's why I really, I don't do drugs. I eat as clean yeah. as I possibly can yeah. because there's yeah. nothing that trumps that connection. Yeah. People say, well, why don't you drink? And I say, doesn't, I mean, there's nothing that tastes as good well, as well, dude, having why would anyone connection. drink alcohol when they knew that alcohol was a consciousness destroyer. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I have way more fun when I'm not drinking, but you yeah. can't have the same connection to yeah. sort. You just cannot. You can still be connected, but you're usually connected to other different places. I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. So so what are you connected to is the real question. And again, as you know, in the new age, there's so many people channeling and talking to beings and 
yeah. dimensional frequencies and all this stuff. And it's again, I always default back to this guy. And he literally said, God doesn't channel. That's right. Because you can experience God when you cleanse your channel, which is your vessel, which is what we're talking about. But I'm not saying because I, I know that, you know, people will say something. I, I'm not saying there aren't clear channels. I know there are. I know there are divine beings out there that are truly attempting to help it, help us. But as you said, and again, this is why this podcast is so amazing. The frequency of their transmission is only as clear as you at the end, as the end user of that channel. And as you said, if you are corrupted, distorted, ill, inflamed, all these things, alcoholic, drug addicted, whatever, smoking weed all day. I mean, I, I mean, I could go on and on. You ain't getting any kind of pure information. You are getting a distorted frequency. And that's exactly what you said. You're right. That's the best way to say it. Cause usually people say, so you're saying if fat people can't be connected to God. <laughs> and and the truth that. is they can, they can. And, you know, as a near death survivor, one of the places I went to, cause I died of a massive Western medication drug overdose. I went to the astral realm at some yeah. place. I was going to be a dispatched, disembodied, you know, human being that had lost my way. And that's what people don't understand is that oftentimes what they think they're tapping into, that's um, God or, you know, Jesus it's or angels is the astral plane. And the thing about astral plane is anyone can tell you they're anything. And if you that's don't right. have discernment, you're going to believe them. Right? What did you see, by the way, when you were in the astral, I'm, I'm interested. Well, the astral realm, okay, what did I see? It looks very much like planet Earth. Yeah. And as an astral being, you're basically there for healing. You're yeah. really there for your own healing. Yeah. And most of the folks in the astral realm that get stuck there are having addiction. They're having some sort of emotional problem. Most of the folks in the astral realm uh, possibly died of suicide or yeah. something really traumatic where they didn't get a chance to – go more into God consciousness, or they just needed to come to this healing place. It's actually a really healing place for the soul to kind of reset itself. But um, it's also a hard place because you, all you can do is you're, you're literally, and this is, it's important for people to understand this. You're literally getting your healing and energy by attaching yourself to humans. Mm -hmm. Right. And Siphoning. Yeah. Siphoning yeah. that energy off yeah. and yeah. relaxing. And that's what you're doing. And yeah. so if you have a habit of drinking, guess what? You're attracting those energies because the first thing when I got into the astral realm, and I love what we're talking about this. It's the most in-depth I've talked about this publicly, is awesome. I went to see, uh, I went to see my boyfriend who had an addiction and I felt so good instantly. I was like, oh, great. I can relax. And what happens on the astral side is that we wonder why people with addictions get stronger. It's because there's attachments that are over on the other side that are like, oh, can we have more of right, that? Right. And the person who's drinking or smoking or eating McDonald's, you know, left and right, or, you know, binge eating the Oreo cookies or whatever it is, shopping at, uh, shopping at Walmart, um, they, they don't understand that what they're connected to on the other side, because they don't actually look, Jay, we're not teaching energetic boundaries no. as kids. This is one of, I, I have a, a teaching mystery school Academy, divine light energy healers Academy. And one of the first things we teach is how to have energetic boundaries as a sovereign being. You actually yes. have to have that yes. because your energy first heart math tells us that eight feet around you is what right. we can measure with our current equipment. But yep. you actually know when you're walking down the street over a hundred yards away, you can feel. Something. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and look, you know, I'm reading an amazing book series right now um, from Laura Knight, Jezizic, the wave series. It's a profound series of books that talks about energy vampirism and what you have to be preparing and again, manage again, managing your energy field and the importance of understanding your energy field and, and, and how you are not, uh, you know, a beacon of light to the parasites and, and, and to the vampiric beings, which are everywhere. Like you said, in the astral and in third dimensional realm, they're everywhere. I mean, you, you really do have to raise your frequency, which is really raising your conscious awareness to a place that you can spot these people. 
And as you said, we're so entrained from a young age to really just like go against what our God-given intuitive sense tells us. You know, again, because I always like to say, you know, our super conscious wisdom, our intuitive side is our higher self. And it will always guide you and never lead you astray, but only when you listen to it. And so many people deny it. You know, they, they you know, the word again, trust your gut. Trust well, your we were intuition. trained out of. We were trained out of listening to it from such Un an earth. Unbelievable. Yes. I mean, so it, it, you really do have to overcome the programming of not trusting your higher knowing, which is again, your higher self. I mean, this is something I've never talked about, but it's true. People, and again, the, the new age kind of like doesn't do a good job of, of teaching people this, but the more you do affirmations in your life, I don't care who you are, the more you learn to actually speak and connect with your higher self. Mm -hmm. That's who you're speaking to when you're looking in the mirror, doing your affirmation exercises, you're actually speaking to your higher self, but obviously you have to have the love and trust of self to do that. So many people like, you know, they, they, they say, I can't do that. I can't look at myself. This is so ridiculous or whatever that, you know, they have all these statements. Well, you're never going to connect to your higher and best version until you learn to do this and make it part of your ritual. And, and, and I think most people know now, dude, I do affirmation practices three days a week. Yeah. I, I do it in my morning when I, you know, in my morning ritual, when I'm doing a shower and I'm shaving and I'm looking in my mirror and I'm doing myself. And sometimes I don't speak it. I, I think it as I'm looking into the mirror, connecting with myself, yes. but other times I do speak the words into existence. Right. So it's like, these are just things that we don't realize, you know, whether it's lack of mentorship, lack of spiritual awareness, lack of, uh, you know, learning from spiritual, great spiritual mentors or, or even books. But, but so, so much of this is not taught yeah. and it's, it's mind blowing how like, you know, ill prepared, most of us are until we do get this awareness. Yeah. Well, and you know, to your point about the affirmations, it's funny because things that we can't see, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily believe in, but if we right. start with a foundation that we're an energetic being and we start with a morning practice of pulling our divine light into our divine vehicle and start to build that central sunshine. One of the really cool things is that if you, pretend like you're the sun and you're radiating so much love and light out of your physical body, what then happens is, as you say, energy vampires won't come into no. your sphere. There's no body in heaven that can come into the sun's orbit right. and take it out. It's right. that strong in right. our solar system, right? Right. So it's that strong. It creates a radiance that pushes things outward. And so most people were designed um, unconsciously to siphon in energy in and through them. And their Taurus field is opposite. And so once you start a new practice, and you start to build your energy from within that ball of sunshine and push it up and out of you, right? Then, and you use those affirmations, I am purified source energy, I am love, I am light, whatever, I'm abundance, whatever mm -hmm. those words are, you start to build that huge ball of light, then guess what happens? Well, those same folks don't come into your world. Yeah. You, you're like the sun, you bounce it out. And, and the folks that do come into your world are totally different. It's, it totally changes your world. But these are the energetic teachings that we did not get taught in school that we really truly need. And they're life changing. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the things you said earlier in this podcast, it's the truth. Like when you're vibrating at a frequency of, let's just say, you know, obviously again, is in physical, in, in physical expression, we, we, we kind of go up and down, right? Again, we have an ego. The ego is obviously there for a purpose. It keeps us alive, although it's managing and harnessing the ego so that it doesn't come out, you know, reactively. Um, but there's going to be days of ups and downs, but if you can keep your frequency around again, if I'm using it, you know, calibrating it on a scale of like 300, you know, you're never going to attract any of the negative beings. You're not going to attract the energy vampires. I mean, this is where people get lost, right? Because they are finding out about this kind of information and they start reading about adrenochrome and energy harvesting and blood sacrifice and elite pet pedophilia and all this stuff. And all that stuff does go on. But the truth is you will not experience any of that if you maintain a frequency that is impervious to all of that stuff. So it's cool to like, 
be aware of it, to be conscious that this kind of stuff goes on. But it's also another thing to like worry about it and fear it because you don't have to, as long as you're living, you know, again, in a service to others, service to creation, you know, life, you know, where you are truly living the, you know, quote unquote, um, golden rule. Yeah. But that's and why people we- get confused. Yeah. I love that you brought that forward. And how do we change the planet? Will we change it just like you pop popcorn, right? How do you go from a pan of totally unpopped popcorn to this fluffy, yummy popcorn? Not that I'm eating popcorn, but, (laughs) but I will say you do it one pop at a time. And the more corns that pop, the hotter the pan gets, the more critical mass and everybody starts to pop. And so the more you can hold your frequency, you act like this radio station. You are a tuning fork. People have to attune to you. Listen, there's a reason why when certain people walk into a room, the room temperature changes. People feel happier, right? People are like, I you know, I've had this tinnitus all my life and you just came in the room and it went away completely. (laughs) You know, uh, I had this instantaneous healing, you know, that stuff happens when you're holding a frequency, you're literally shifting the energy field and people around you, everybody's a tuning fork. They're going to tune to you if possible. And so that's why right now is the most important time to raise your vibration and really hold that space no matter what's going on in the world. Yes, it's easy to see all that's going on in the world and get sucked down. And that's part of it. They want you to be sucked into fear. They want you to go into fear. They want you to go into worry. They want you to go into victimhood. And this is never going to get any better. And oh, my life, right? And oh, these people's lives. And oh, 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 that keeps everybody here. Mm -hmm. When we are not in charge of our of our frequency, of our sexuality, like think about, and I'm going to just go off on a bit of a tangent, but think about the, you know, the churches keeping us out of sexuality mode, right? right? Think about being a fully embodied human being that's dealing in pleasure and love and joy. You boy, you're going to change people. You're going to change the planet if you're operating there. And the more people that come into contact with you, they're going to be like, Oh, I want to do that. That's, I want to have that experience. Yeah. Beautiful. Very well said. Um, so when people say to you, cause I know you have, uh, before we end this, um, you know, you have a, a toolkit or whatever on raising your vibration. Like if somebody comes up to you and says, Alyssa, how do I raise my vibration? What, what is your, what is your normal answer to that? Well, I do have a toolkit for that. <laughs> so I say, check out my toolkit. Um, but no, I, first of all, you know, I, I believe it's about filling up your cup and connecting back into source, reminding yourself that you are source energy. You are a direct piece of God consciousness. And that's the first piece. If you want to raise your vibration, just daily tuning in to the frequency, right? How do we tune into frequency? We think about it. We feel it. We yeah. connect with it. How do you dial your friend's phone number? You dial in their phone number. You you know, you know, type in Larry on the phone and it gets Larry. How do you tune into the highest frequency? You think about it. You feel about it. You feel what it's like to be connected to infinite source. You pull light into your body. I have a, this whole process called light pulling. And it's literally where you just imagine pulling light into your body. Your brain is pretty stupid. It doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. So you can just sit there and imagine yourself being filled with rainbow light. We are walking rainbows. We are sacred geometry with rainbow light. And that is us, right? We are a rainbow spectrum of light. So you can just imagine this rainbow light coming into your body. And if you do just that daily, you'll raise your vibration. You'll be a different human being. Literally, if you get, and I always encourage people to go get grounded, go literally go sit your buns in the grass or the ground, however you have to do it, get connected because also frequency needs to flow some through something and be grounded in. If you try to plug your computer in without it being grounded, you'll blow it up. So when you're pulling in all this light, you need to be grounded, be in direct connection with the earth. You're going to, you know this, you're a biohacker, but you're going to 
diffuse all of that inflammation. It naturally goes away when you spend 20 minutes or more in direct connection with the earth because it's our charging mat. It's our charging station. And again, we've been cut off from the things that naturally nourish us and connect us. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I spend at a minimum 30 minutes every day, sun gazing and connected to the ground, you know, essentially to source, to, to Gaia. I mean, I mean, the, the planet is source. I mean, I mean, it's part parcel of the whole thing. And yeah, I mean the, obviously the profound inflammation suppression that grounding gives you and, and offers people, but you know, again, so many people are disconnected, especially living in the big major cities where they don't have grass, they don't have trees, they don't have nature to walk out into in the backyard. I mean, you know, when people ask me like, what do I do? I say move. Yes, exactly. The first step is literally move. Yes. Yeah, stop Sell, being in disharmony with the planet. Sell your high rise condo or move out of your high rise apartment, living in a demonically infested city. I mean, look, here's the truth too. You know, you were just talking about, you know, antennas and, and conduits. People don't realize that those giant steel, uh, you know, LED infested buildings in these major cities are also amplification tuning frequencies for fear. Yes. And they're totally. siphoning your fear based energy, your hate. I hate my life. Check out, go to my cubicle, sit in my cubicle, hate my life, check out, come home, get into my hate my life condo in a high rise building, watch my hate my life TV frequency. I mean, people don't understand that they're being tuned Yes. At all times. And so you got to, like you said, disconnect. You have to go out into the field of force, which is the source of the energy of, of creation. And, and, and until we do that, you're going to be discombobulated. I mean, my God, as you know, just these. Yes. I mean, look, think of what, you know, again, and, 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 and again, I know we're all over the place. This is such an amazing podcast. But the reality is, is that we are consenting to their technological frequencies when we use them. And I'm not saying that there aren't good times and that we can't get benevolent, you know, things and expressions. You and I are having a podcast, you know, 4,000, 4,800 miles away right now. And it's amazing. And so thankfully we have technology to, to, to um, provide this for us. But at the same time, if all you ever do is immerse yourself in it. Well, I want to say something about that. Because yeah. I worked in the cell phone industry for many years in corporate for a company yeah. that I will not name their name. And you don't want would, them to send an intercollect ballistic uh, continental missile at your way. What I think is important for people to remember about these devices is, and, and not a lot of people know this, is in the early 2000s, there were a bunch of folks sitting in meeting rooms. I was not one of the folks, but I was privy to the conversation that how do we program these phones to be completely addictive? Yeah. How do we gamify these? How yes. do we make it so people can't set this down? And yes. that was the conversation. And that's what's and happened now. People, they're so addicted. You see them walking across the street with it, almost getting hit. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And My wife and I saw that the other day. We watched this young girl. She was like 15 or 16 years old, completely be devoid that her life was in danger crossing a busy frequent freeway going like this and that's the level of a drug think about a drug a total yeah. drug addict right. that's completely checked out and so one of the things i want people to understand is if you are having a problem with this you have to understand it's an addictive device it's every bit as addictive yes. as cigarette smoking because it's that instant reward multiple times yes. a day you so have to break dopamine, yourself dopamine, of that dopamine. yep yep yeah. You have to, and you're, it's false dopamine all day long. And you have to be willing to say, I might be addicted to my phone and I'm going to take steps to remove myself. Just like you said, move. I'm going to take steps. I had to do that. I moved to Hawaii because I knew that I wanted to be in alignment with a frequency of new earth. I wanted to be in alignment with the frequency of higher consciousness. And I knew that where I was, was not in alignment with that. And uh, sometimes we have to make hard decisions. Sometimes we have to make decisions that is like, well, this might not be the easiest journey to do, but mm -hmm. gosh, darn it. That's the thing that's worth it. It's always worth it when you can make those hard decisions and you can say, yes, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Alyssa, you're amazing. Literally amazing. I mean, this podcast has been amazing. I mean, I, I want to talk to you off air um, and I will in a second, but uh, so you guys obviously 
for all the people, let me give you your IG first too. I mean, I'm kind of speechless right now, which is rare for somebody like me. Um, I'm really grateful that you came on and shared your energy and shared your awareness and your knowing. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. Um, I'm going to give you the final words. Uh, obviously, follow her on IG and go to her website and support her. I mean, I know you have a lot of stuff. You say you have a divine light mystery school uh, and obviously you do coaching and stuff like that. But I'll just give you the final word. You said 2023 to 2025. What do you think? And I know I'm saying opinion, uh, you know, but you're feeling it right now. You're in the divine and energy of flow. You're flowing right now. Like where, where do you see the USA and really just the, the world, I guess, by January, 2025? I have always seen these years as the massive wake up years. It's probably some of the hardest years that we will encounter as a human species that we've seen in our lifetimes. <coughs> Darkness before dawn, right? Yes, for many, okay? And for many people who are listening to that, if that produces fear in your body, what you want to remember is that doesn't have to be you. You can be the one who's holding the frequency while some of these things are happening and helping to shift the outcomes, helping to vibrate it higher, helping to change the destination. And you can be the one who's already healed, more healed, so that when you're, I, I think about my own journey. When I was coming out of my dark night of the soul, I listened to Wayne Dyer. You yeah. know, I just listened to anything Wayne Dyer. I just would listen to him on repeat and over and over again. And Marianne Williamson, those were the early ones, right? Yeah. And so now, you can be that person. You can, you've done that healing work. You can be the one holding that frequency. So yes, I think we're going to encounter some dark times. I think we'll absolutely have a financial reset coming into 2024. You're starting to see it now. Uh, I think it's going to be big, but I feel like if you're in a particular frequency, what's going to happen for you is you're going to be totally supported. You're going to be in the magic and miracle zone. You're going to see things flooding in and new opportunities, and it's going to feel really different. You're not going going to be in the dark night of your soul. You're going to be leading the charge and leading the way and constructing new things. And there's going to be new possibilities and opportunities that are going to blow your absolute mind whilst you're holding space for your fellow humans to clean up their stuff. Absolutely amazing. Where you place your consciousness is what you get. So ladies and gentlemen, and all the amazing folks that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, as always support the amazing individuals that come on truly one of the most amazing individuals that I've ever interviewed, Alyssa Rushton at Alyssa Rushton.com. And you can follow her at Alyssa Rushton IG. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.